Good evening and a warm welcome to Empowering You for Victory. Moyen and I send our fondest love greetings to every one of you. Praise God. We are looking at the glory of God and the Bible speaks about the life of God as a river that flows from the house of God. We believe it flows from the throne of God and it flows through our mouths once it gets into our heart. I want to read from Ezekiel 47, reading from verse 1. Afterwards he brought me again unto the door of the house, and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward, for the forefront of the house stood towards the east, and the waters came down from under the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward, and led me about the way without unto the utter gate, by the way that looketh eastward, and behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had the measuring line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits and brought me through, and the waters were to the ankles. And he measured a thousand, and he brought me through, and the waters were to the knees. He measured a thousand, and brought me through, and the waters were to the loins. Afterwards he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over, for the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Now when I had returned, behold, at the bank of the river were very many trees on the one side and on the other. Then said he unto me, These waters issue out towards the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whithersoever the rivers shall come, shall live. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come thither, and they shall be healed, and everything shall live whither the river cometh. And it shall come to pass that the fishes shall stand upon it from Engedia unto Neglem. They shall be a place to spread forth the nets. Their fish shall be according to their kinds, as the fish of the great sea exceeding many. But the miry places thereof and the marishes shall not be healed. They shall be given to salt. And by the river upon the bank thereof on this side and on that side shall grow all trees for me, whose leaf shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth the new fruit according to his months, because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary. And the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. Praise God for his word. As we look at the rivers of God in the scriptures, and particularly this particular river, it had different depths in it. It started from the house of God. This was a desert, and Ezekiel had a vision. He looked and he saw the sanctuary, the church, the temple on a hill. And as he gazed upon it, he saw waters coming out from the door. It didn't start off as a river. It started off as a trickle, as you can see waters coming out of the door. It's not like a deep river. But as these waters experienced momentum, Ezekiel saw a strange sight. The river got deeper and got wider. And he is standing outside the river and he's a spectator. We've been looking for a number of weeks now that 
the Bible says, wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. A spectator is not a partaker. A partaker is one who participates. And one of the examples I often use is you can see people watch a soccer game maybe even from their homes, and they're supporting a particular team. And when they score, they, the team scores, they jump up and shout, and they say, we scored. Well, they were not playing the game. They were spectators. They were fans. And so the team played the game. Now, that is a big problem with spectators. They don't participate. And therefore, they see other participators experience the manifestation of the Word of God. I want to encourage you, family. It is participation. It is partaking that causes the experience, not spectatorism. So there was a man with a measuring line. He called Ezekiel to come into the river. And that is what God is saying to us, that there is a river that is flowing from heaven. It is the glory of God. And we're going to need to get into the flow of the momentum of this waters of God, the life of God. And so Ezekiel gets off the banks and he obeys the instruction of the man with the measuring line. And he walks and the waters are rising. First of all, the waters get to his ankles. And that speaks to us of walking in the spirit and walking by faith. That's how you actually participate with the move of God. You walk in the spirit and you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And then you walk by faith and not by sight. But the man with the measuring line measured a thousand cubits and calls Ezekiel forward. And God is calling us to move on. God is moving on. God is a moving God. And as Ezekiel moves on, the waters come to his knees. I want you to see this picture because it depicts the life of a believer that's moving on with God. And the knees speak about our prayer life. Every successful endeavor is birthed in prayer and is sustained by prayer. A prayerless people is a powerless people. That is why much prayer, much power. Little prayer, little power. No prayer, no power. You can have all the knowledge of the Word of God, but if you're not spending time in intimacy with God, listening and speaking, you won't fully experience the manifestation of what the Word of God says. The man with the measuring line measures another thousand cubits and calls Ezekiel deeper. God is calling us deeper. Family, Jesus said to Peter, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. If you want a boat sinking, net breaking catch, you're going to have to move on with God. You're going to have to walk with God and go deeper. And Ezekiel obeys. And then as he's moving forward, the waters are rising. They come to the loins. And we looked at that the loins speak of the production the productivity of believers. It covers your know, reproductive organs. And so that begins to make you fruitful. You begin to experience fruit in every area of your life. 
But the man with the measuring rod calls Ezekiel to go deeper than just bearing fruit because as Ezekiel goes deeper, he no more can stand on his own two feet. The waters are higher than his height. They're greater than his ability. And the only thing he can do is to swim. And so Ezekiel begins to swim in these waters. There are currents in these waters. There are currents from heaven. That's why the Bible says, we must trust in the Lord with all our heart, lean not on our own understanding. Too many people, they only work things out in their mind, and if it can compute, then they can believe it's God. But if you want to operate in supernatural moves of God, it's far beyond your thinking, far beyond working things out with your mind. That's why the Bible says you trust upon the Lord with all your heart and you lean not on your own understanding. Not that you don't use your mind, but you are experiencing the leading of the Lord from your heart. Most of the times there is a clash between the mind and the heart. And that is why you need to have a sensitive heart to know what God is saying and you don't just go with logic. God is bigger than your mind, bigger than your thinking bigger than you working things out mathematically. You cannot work a miracle out mathematically and you cannot work the supernatural out mathematically. And so Ezekiel is busy enjoying the flow. You see, when you begin to move with the move of God, when you begin to flow in the currents of the Holy Spirit, you actually become one with the Holy Spirit because you are moving with the Holy Spirit. But if you are struggling to do that and you only want to do things in your own strength, in your own ability, in your own giftings, you may not be able to experience that word flow. It's the word flow speaks about motion that is increasing. It's a law of motion. It's like a river flows. And the Holy Spirit flows and God flows. But while Ezekiel is enjoying the flow of this river, the man calls him to, to come to the banks of the river. And, and he gets to the banks and this desert has blossomed. It's become like the Garden of Eden. As I close today, I want to repeat a statement that I've always said when, we, when I teach on this. Where the river flows, the trees grow. Where the trees grow, the fruit show. Where the fruit show, the people go. That is the process of the move of God. Ezekiel saw trees uh, on either sea side of the bank and there was fruit every month and the leaves were for the healing of the nations. They were for health. And there were fishermen on the banks of the river. Some were casting their nets and others were just catching fish one at a time, but there were exceeding many and all types of fish. So family, this move of God from the throne, from the altar of God, from the house of God, uh, comes into our lives. And then we must release this move through the words that we speak, the songs that we sing, and the words that we release will carry the power of God to transform any desert in your life into a blossomed garden of Eden. 
and even in your family's life and in your neighborhood, in your community, in this nation and the nations of the world, you fulfill the great commission through the power of the Holy Spirit and not in your own strength. You lead souls to the Lord in the power of the Holy Spirit. You shepherd people and disciple people in the power of the Holy Ghost and the leading of the Holy Ghost. God richly bless you. Allow me to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you. You said in your word in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 to your apostles that they must not depart from Jerusalem even though they knew the word that you taught. They were not ready, but they must wait for the promise of the Holy Ghost and they will receive power and they will be witnesses. We thank you today. I release the power to be filled with the Holy Ghost so your people can be witnesses unto you in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. God richly bless you. I'll see you tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Bye-bye.